Hi, I'm Yoram Solomon, and uh, after the last video that uh, I produced on uh, how to uh, uh, record high definition, high quality broadcast quality with Zoom and uh, specifically using OBS for it, I got quite a few requests on a, a tutorial on just how to use Zoom, uh, just how to use OBS. So uh, don't expect very high quality. Really what I'm trying to do is just convey how I'm doing it, what I'm doing. I'm going to go through some entry level features as well as advanced features. Um, first of all, uh, why do we wanna use OBS at all? Why, why use OBS? Why not just use straight Zoom? Uh, first of all, it's the ability to create multiple scenes. And, and it's not just the ability to create multiple scenes as it is the ability to switch quickly between them. So for example, I know that you think that what I have behind me is uh, really just a TV on a, a gray wall, but in fact, it's not. I am in my living room. Well, actually, I'm not in my living room. I'm in the uh, Millennium Falcon or to be more accurate, I am right now sitting in my most natural position, which is in the front seat of an FA-18C. You can see how quickly I switched between those uh, scenes. In fact, those all of those scenes had the same camera, used the same camera, a DSLR that's standing right in front of me, but I can even switch to have multiple cameras. Okay, this camera is not set very well, uh, but I can switch a lot of things with OBS a lot more easily than I do it with Zoom. So first of all, it's uh, creating multiple scenes. Uh, there's only one scene in Zoom and it, it is whatever uh, you programmed it to be. It's using multiple cameras, multiple angles. So one thing that you'll see at some point, uh, I'll show you how I even use my iPhone as a camera using an app, uh, using multiple layers of content. So what you see here are layers of content. And in fact, what I can show you is that even the TV itself is not uh, is, is a layer. Uh, the gray screen behind me is a layer, so I can eliminate that. Uh, obviously, I really do have green screen. On top of it, a gray wall. On top of it, uh, TV. On top of it, I can have, uh, for example, my formulas and, and obviously other different layers. It gives you the um, flexibility of, uh, and by the way, Zoom only gives you two layers and it's you and it's whatever is you decide behind you, even though more recently they allowed you to use PowerPoint as a virtual background, but still it's two layers. It's the background and it's you. Uh, and that is assuming that you have a reasonable enough natural background that allows you, allows Zoom to replace it with whatever and it's not going to be as good as what OBS does. Um, by the way, the cool thing about OBS is that it's free. The next thing is uh, the flexibility of showing what you want wherever you want it. So I can start playing, for example, with the uh, sizes of things. So, uh, you know, hey, we're going to put our logo here. Actually, we're going to put our logo in this corner and we're going to make it bigger. No, we're going to make it smaller. Uh, there are a lot of things that you can play with because you have a lot more flexibility with um, uh, with OBS. Uh, the ability to use filters and effects. So right now, uh, the only effect that I'm using is something that's called chroma key, and that's the elimination of the green screen behind me. And I'll show you how to do that. Zoom does not give you that ability. It's a better handling of green screen, and I talked about that in the previous video. Green screen typically is uh, uh, handled pretty poorly with uh, Zoom. Actually, there is a way to make it a little better. And I showed that in the previous video on how to produce high definition or how to record high definition Zoom interviews or calls. Um, but still, OBS is going to be a layer above and, and maybe even more than a layer above. And finally, it's the ability to record locally in high definition where Zoom really lets you record only at 720p at the maximum. And especially when you look at the video of the remote people, there it's pretty poor quality because it's limited by the bandwidth and doing it uh, online, uh, doing it online and live, I should say. So as I said before, uh, I'm going to talk about some beginner functions. I'm going to talk about advanced functions and I'm going to mention which ones which. And... Uh, Again, don't expect very high quality from the tutorial video itself. I'm not trying to sell you any services. You're not any of my clients. 
Uh, but uh, I, for the most part, you're not even going to see me, except you're going to see me through the OBS screen. So I'm going to switch into showing you uh, OBS. I'm going to show you all the different functions and uh, I'm going to show you where it fits in, in everything. Stay tuned. So back to what is OBS. Uh, first of all, it's a free software. There are two pieces here. So I want to make sure that you know that you need to download two pieces. The first one is called OBS Studio. It's as you can see, it's an open broadcaster software, which actually means that it's free. It's open. It's for use by the community. Uh, go to the uh, obsproject.com website, and this is where you download it. There is a Windows version, works great at Windows 10, uh, Mac version, and even a Linux version. So you just go here, download uh, installation. It's pretty is pretty self-explanatory. The next page that you want to go to is OBS Camera or Virtual Cam. And I'm going to explain where, where do both of them fit in uh, the next uh, picture. Uh, there is a comment here that says that this version is currently uh, deprecated and should not be used with OBS Studio V25, which is the version we currently use. So use this version instead. So that's what I use. Uh, I have no issues. That's where you find them. Next, I want to show you where OBS really fits in the overall scheme of things. Uh, if this is your computer, you will have a camera or more than one camera. You will have a microphone. You will have lights. The OBS fits in between the camera and Zoom. Now, it can fit between the microphone and Zoom, but you will have to install one more thing for that. And I frankly, I don't see the value. So typically, when I have Zoom, I go from the microphone directly to Zoom. It's just like you select the microphone uh, regularly. The camera, on the other hand, goes through OBS instead of going directly into Zoom. And then you have your Zoom call and it goes into the cloud. OBS also records, just like Zoom does, but OBS records in high definition. So whenever I record, I actually record with both. I record both with Zoom and with OBS. Zoom would give me the overall, uh, I can see the other people with uh, Zoom uh, recorded in the recording. With OBS, I can only see what's being captured locally with my camera. And here's where the different elements, the different components come together in a little more detail. First of all, on the left side, you can see all of the sources of content. So whether it's a video capture or video camera, audio capture or a microphone, you have different displays. You can capture a display. You can capture a window. You can capture images or videos that are pre-recorded, uh, logos, uh, things that uh, have no background and are transparent and therefore can be stacked uh, on top of each other. So there is a list of sources on the left. So the, the four boxes on the left actually could be a lot more than four, and I'll show you our sources. The second part is OBS. OBS itself collects all of those sources and compiles that into one stream that will go into whatever. However, it's still not going out there until you have the second piece of software installed called OBS Virtual Cam. It is important, if I remember correctly, that you install them in the right order. So first download OBS, install OBS, then download OBS Virtual Cam and install that. That allows OBS, a piece of software, to behave like it's a camera and feed the camera input into whatever tool you're going to use. So those could be tools like for video conferencing, tools like Zoom, Google Meet, uh, Facebook. Uh, just last week, last Friday, I did a workshop for a client and um, I, it started at 8 a.m. At about 7.30 a.m., I realized I don't have the Zoom link for it, which is something I shouldn't have done. But I'm sure it happens every now and then. What I did realize is they have a Google Meets link in their invitation to that meeting. And guess what? I just went into Google Meet and I just selected OBS as the camera input into Google Meet and everything went exactly according to plan. Uh, you can use that for a live streaming application such as Facebook Live, Facebook Rooms, YouTube Live, uh, LinkedIn Live, any other things uh, 
that uh, need a camera input and it's just that OBS is between your camera and a lot of other things that will enhance your camera image and into whatever application you're using the camera or use the camera with before. By the way, I should add that I'm using yet another tool to record this video. I'm recording part of the video in OBS, but it's a little problematic to record OBS using OBS because it's not going to let you do that. Just like Zoom will never let you share the Zoom panel or the Zoom app itself. Uh, so I'm, uh, if you are using a Windows machine, and I'm using a Windows machine, and you hold the Windows button in the bottom left, uh, second from the left in the bottom, and the, the key G, so Windows and G, something will open up, and that is a uh, game capture. It's actually more than a game capture, it's, uh, but it's part of uh, Windows. It's actually uh, associated with Xbox. It allows you to record yourself. It's typically for gaming applications, so when I'm playing a game, uh, like my flight simulators, then uh, I can do uh, Windows G and then go into record, capture and record, and that's how I can capture anything on the screen, including whatever is coming through my microphone uh, that I'm talking to. So this allows me to show you things and annotate them with my voice uh, at the same time, including showing you how OBS works. With that, I'm, I'm going to talk about the uh, hierarchy. There is a hierarchy within OBS, and it took me a while to figure it out, and, and a lot of programming and uh, misprogramming and, and reprogramming. There is a hierarchy of four things. One is your profile. I really only use one profile. Uh, you can use multiple profiles. Uh, I never got a need to. The second part is scene collections. You're going to see that we have multiple scenes, and I'll show you how I'm using scenes. I'm creating them. I'm switching between them. There are multiple scenes, so there is a scene collection that has a list of scenes. The next one is a scene itself. The scene itself is one combination of cameras. doesn't have to be just one camera. It could be multiple cameras and multiple other sources that feed into one camera feed. So this is a scene. You can switch between different scenes and I'll show you how to do that. And all of those scenes have to be defined within a scene collection. Underneath at the bottom are the sources. The sources can be video sources, uh, they can be audio sources, any uh, images or PowerPoints or screenshots or, or live screens and live uh, browser screens. All of those are sources. So j just remember this hierarchy. Uh, set up your own profile, but I don't have two profiles. I actually created another profile and realized I don't need another profile. The scene collection is what you may need for different scenes that are applicable for maybe different types of presentations. Scene within a uh, scene collection, after you define the scene collection, a scene is one combination of sources, and then finally you have the sources at the bottom. And I'll show you how to use all of those. Without further ado, we're going to start using OBS. So this is the OBS screen that, that you can see. Uh, this is one of two modes, and you'll see the other mode later. I'm not going to play with profiles. This is where it allows me to start a new profile. And as I said, I'm going to start with uh, screen collections. I'm going to create a new screen collection. What you're seeing right now on the screen is my what I typically use, uh, the, the current one, what I call the uh, the regular one. We're going to start a new one, and we're going to call it OBS NSA. How about that? So now we started that. We have a new collection. What you see is we have no scenes, no sources, nothing in audio. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to start a scene. So we're going to add a scene. So this is the window where scenes are added. And I'm going to hit the plus in the bottom. It asks for a name for this scene. And this is going to be a scene in which you're going to see me. And in the background, you're going to see uh, a picture. Uh, so we're going to call it uh, Yoram one how about that very very creative name uh yoram one we have a scene now uh if we had another scene we could switch between them but what we don't have is we don't have any sources so we're going to go into the second window here 
and we're going to hit a plus here. And what are the sources we're going to be using? Well, we're going to be using uh, several sources, but the most obvious one is the, um, where is it? Video capture device. So we're going to take a video capture device. Now, since right now nothing is being defined, you can add something that's already existing. And typically you add something that's existing, and we'll do that later when you're setting another scene and you're taking something that's already created. We're going to call this the D3500 because this is a D35, an icon D3500 going through Elgato. Uh, what is the name of it? HD60S. So this is the name, and we're going to make it visible. What do we want to get? Yes, you know what? It already uh, kind of assumed that this is what I wanted to get. This is the window that opens, and here are all the sources. Well, OBS, feeding OBS into OBS could be something interesting, but uh, that's not what we're going to do. Logic Capture is a software that's uh, linked to Logitech cameras. Um, I actually have the uh, C920, so I can choose the C920 here. And now I'm getting the second camera, so I have a second camera. Uh, you can, by the way, see the quality difference uh, between that and the uh, high-definition uh, DSLR that I'm using. So I'm going to stick with the DSLR. Uh, really, all I have to do right now is just click OK. However, one thing that I can do is configure that video. And what would happen is that it actually opens up whatever software you have to enable that video. But for now, all we're going to do is just say OK. And guess what? We now have a source. Let's add another source. And the next source is just going to be, uh, let's make it an image. And uh, what would this image be? Um, this image will be something that I have somewhere. Uh, so I'm going to just uh, call it uh, living room, mainly because it's going to be a picture of my living room. So we're going to say, OK. Uh, you know what? Instead of living room, how about this? Uh, we're going to put a, an image that I downloaded from uh, Pixabay. So let's browse. Um, I'm going to go into my asset files and go into Pixabay and uh, yeah, I'm kind of drawn to this, but um, how about this? We're going to put an audience behind me. So uh, we're going to take audience. And here is the audience. Uh, we're going to say OK. And uh, you can see that you can see the audience, but you can't see me. The reason is because there is a priority. Whatever is on the top, and every time you add something, it shows up at the top. Whatever is on the top is what you're going to see. And if there is no opening here for anything else, then that's the only thing you'll see. Now, here's another thing. You can see that there is a red uh, red border to it. If I went to uh, the camera, actually, it, it, it is a different red, order, uh, red border. But we're going to take this one. This makes... This gives me the possibility to change this image. Now, the image is still in front of me. Now you can see me. Uh, the image is still in front of me, but I can play with it. Um, I can play with the size and I can play with its location. So maybe what I want to do is just put myself here and uh, then these are my slides. These are going to be my slides. And, and, and I can show you later that we can add slides. Uh, for now, I actually want this in my background. So what I'm going to do is, if this is the one that's highlighted, I can just lower it here, and now you can see that my camera is taking front and center. By the way, an easier way is just to move them around. Uh, you can just drag them. You don't need to use this. Well, obviously, we have a green screen, and uh, we don't see what's behind us, so we need to eliminate the green screen. And eliminating the green screen really happens with a right button click. And there's something that's called filters. So I'm going to hit filters. So once again, right button, right button click, uh, mouse click um, over whatever scene you have. In this case, it's the green screen. And we're going to choose filters. This is what opens up. This is the image, unfiltered, audio video filters, or effect filters. 
Well, eliminating green screen is an effect that's called chroma key. Sometimes it's called ultra key. Here it's called chroma key. So what we'll do is we'll just click on the plus and guess what? Chroma key just opened up. Uh, do you want a different name for it? Well, no, I'm pretty good with chroma key. So we're going to hit chroma key. Well, as it turns out, the last setting that I had for chroma key really just eliminated the green screen. Uh, I'm going to come back to this in a second. And so if I close it up, Look at how crisp it is. Uh, th this is not the quality that you get when you ask Zoom to eliminate green screen. And I didn't even set it up yet. Um, you should set it up uh, according to the lighting that you have. So make sure that you use consistent lighting because otherwise it's not going to work that great. Let's go back, right button, um, button, filters, chroma key is still here. And as soon as I click on it, we can see different settings. So I can start playing with similarity and see if, if I start lowering the similarity, then I really demand that all the greens look very much alike. Whereas if I go all the way to the other end, I'm, I'm really saying any color is close enough to green. So the answer is somewhere in between and it feels like this one. This is how smooth it is. So if, for example, you can see this, uh, increasing the smoothness means that uh, you're going to uh, uh, not accept uh, or, or smooth things up in terms of uh, color uh, correction. So and the other one is a key color spill reduction. You're going to be playing with all of those. Now, by the way, opacity means that I just disappeared. Uh, contrast and everything else. So what you're going to find is, you know what, I'm going to hit defaults and see what the default is. Looks like the default is pretty good, although what I see here is I see some noise maybe i need to add some no reduce some smoothness no actually this is not a smoothness thing uh but i'm trying to play with it to come up with what is the best combination it looks like this is a pretty darn good combination i can still see green around me which means that uh, i should probably play a little more with chroma key uh sometimes it's not even playing with chroma key it's uh playing with the camera itself, which again, I, I told you that I may show you something. So let's go to the uh, right, uh, actually not right button, but just double click on it. And when you double click on it, or if you hit the settings down here, there is configure video and whatever you can configure, you will be able to do it from this screen. So for example, I can play with uh, hue and brightness and contrast. Let's see, do I like this color more? Uh, maybe a little less saturation. Of course, you can see the interaction between this and chroma key. Uh, I'm trying not to make this overly complex, but, uh, oh, sharpness, that's, that's a good one. Uh, the image can be smoother or sharper, or I can just go back to defaults and, uh, and leave it at that. So for now, I'm, I'm pretty happy with uh, what I'm seeing and uh, what you see is you see that background. Uh, let me add another one, another element. Oh, one more thing. A microphone showed up. When I added the, uh, the uh, Elgato adapter that adapts from my camera to, my, uh, to OBS, uh, something else showed up and that is sound. So as it turns out, this camera does pick up, does have a microphone, it does pick up sound. And the Elgato device, the adapter that converts HDMI into uh, USB, into my laptop, and then into OBS, as it turns out, it does convert it. Uh, I'm not sure that I want this audio. I would rather have another piece of audio. So all I'm going to do is here in the audio mixer, I'm just going to click this and no more sound coming from uh, Elgato, from the uh, camera. We're going to add another one another element and the next element is going to be um what did we want to add uh, oh you know what let's add a logo so logo is really once again it's just an uh, image so uh, it's an uh, it's an image and and i'm going to take image and i'm going to call it logo because it's a new one and then let, let's go look for it so uh this is still under assets uh original I'm going to take my own ICI logo. And uh, well, I have multiple logos that uh, I have been using over the years. And this time I want to use the book of trust, or you know what, let's do something even better. 
let's actually go to my book of trust uh, picture. And so we're going to find the book of trust and we're going to go to the cover. And in the cover, there is this picture. Actually, this one I think is going to be the one that I can use. This is a picture. Since this is a PNG, it has no background. Uh, it's just like green screen over this picture. So here, here it is. Uh, too big, right? So let's just make it smaller. And this is something that you can't do in Zoom, but you can do it with uh, OBS. So we're going to take this book and put it over here. Uh, right now it's in front of me. If I would like to be in front of it, uh, how about if I raise the camera like this, and now I am in front of it. So we can play in the order of things here in OBS. One more thing, especially if I'm going to record, if I record it right now, and you can see me hovering over the record button, if I record it right now, I will not um, get anything because the only thing that OBS puts out is the uh, Elgato microphone and right now it's shut down. So what I'll do is I'll just add another source. This time we're going to call it an audio input capture. And so let's click on that. Nothing exists right now. So we're just going to call it the uh, Blue Yeti, which is the microphone that I'm using. And uh, device, there's default. Let's see what we have. We have the USB advanced audio device is really the name of the port where the... Uh, Blue Yeti is connected, so we're going to say yes, and you can see that we just added it. Uh, I don't, th there, there is no uh, order or priority here, but you can see that this is active, and so if I was recording right now, this is what I would see. Okay, next part, we're going to add a PowerPoint, and we're going to put it either behind me or in front of me. So the first thing is open your PowerPoint. I'm going to open my PowerPoint, and um, See, this is a PowerPoint, and I'm going to take it into presentation mode. So let's go into presentation mode. Now I'm going to go back to OBS, and in OBS, I'm going to add another source. This time I'm going to go with window capture. So we're not capturing an image, we're actually capturing a window. Uh, Window is, uh, is a specific window. There is a display capture as well, which captures everything in the specific screen. Those are two different things because on a single screen, you can have multiple windows. So we're going to go with the window right now, and we're going to call it PowerPoint. And okay, and let's see what we have. Actually, it did kind of gravitate towards but guess what? It took the presenter slide. So if I open it up, I'm going to see several different things. The one that I'm after is the one that's called PowerPoint Slideshow. This is the actual slideshow. This is, this is the uh, presentation file. This is, you already saw the presenter view. The one that says PowerPoint Slideshow is the slideshow itself. Okay, my friends, I'm back. Uh, I found the problem. Uh, initially, I thought maybe it's because I called it PowerPoint uh, instead of PowerPoint. Uh, so I went, I grabbed the buy, a pint, and no, it didn't do the trick. Uh, I do want to show you how to change uh, a name. So if you right, if you not right click, if uh, I'm sorry, double click on uh, anything. Uh, for example, one of the scenes here you can rename it. So I decided to rename it PPT, which by the way was not the issue. Uh, let me go back. I'll double click on it. This is what we got when we found it. Here's an interesting thing. Now, again, I don't want to discourage you. OBS uh, does require some expertise and some skills, and every now and then you're going to play with something. Restarting OBS did not work at this time. However, here in this PowerPoint thing, I'm, obviously I'm choosing the right thing. I'm choosing the PowerPoint slideshow itself. It still is not showing. See the capture method instead of automatic. I said, let's just do Windows graphic capture. And guess what? That's our PowerPoint. I'll do OK. Uh, again, we're seeing a problem. Do you see the problem? If you don't see the problem, the problem is that you don't see me. So I'm going to put the PowerPoint all the way in the back. 
We still don't see it. Why don't we see it? Because living room is on. Now, you do not have to eliminate uh, different sources. All you have to do is just shut it down. And so it's still there. It's still in the background. It's just not here. Now, one thing that comes to mind is, and, and I do a lot of this, uh, I, I use the slides, you will notice that my slides actually are only in the right side of the screen, and there's nothing on the left side. The reason for that is because it allows me to be on the left side. So let's, let's put out the logo here, and then we're going to take me, see the red, uh, the red around it, the red border is actually the image. Uh, coming from the camera, and I can move myself, and now I am on the left side of the screen, and my PowerPoint is on the right. Now, I know that you don't trust me at this point, uh, that uh, I'm really, I really am in control of the PowerPoint, so this is how I move on slides. Let me bring this back, and sure enough, uh, I cannot control it if I'm uh, using the same window. But uh, you're going to have to trust me. You have to trust me that uh, at this point, the PowerPoint does change. Actually, that gave me an opportunity to try something else, and that is I'm going to show you how we add cameras. So right now, my D3500 still sees me, but we're going to add another camera here. And the camera we will add is the laptop's own camera. So let's go into, um, where do we have video? There is a video capture device. And we're going to say laptop camera. And this is not the same one that already exists. So we're going to do add a new one. And let's go and find if there is anything else. We're still on capture. Um, integrated webcam that would be the uh, laptop camera and sure enough now you do see me looking at you because i am using the same screen so if i had the green screen uh, behind me then uh, you will see uh, i could eliminate that uh, you can by the way see the difference in quality between this camera and the other one um, I, would, I typically like to put all of the cameras in just about the same order. So now you can actually see both cameras. You can see this one because I have green screen and I eliminated that, but you can also see the other one. And of course, uh, we can go to the uh, laptop camera and uh, play with the size of it and say, you know what? I want to have those two images at the same time all the time. Okay. Uh, let's stop with the PowerPoint, and I'm going to bring this to the main screen so I can uh, see what I'm doing. What I want to do next is uh, to actually add another scene. So first of all, uh, we don't need the laptop camera. I'm not shutting it down. I'm not. I'm not eliminating that as a source. I just, uh, you know, turn it off uh, so that you can see uh, it's still there. I, I can bring it up whenever I want. I can move it and so on. But this time what we're going to do is add another scene. So this is going to be one scene. Okay, one scene is going to be PowerPoint behind me, me in the front on the left. Another scene is going to be uh, a scene that is a lot more natural to me. And we're going to call it, uh, scene number two is probably not it, Yoram dash in dash F. F. A 18 C, which is my most favorite fighter jet in the world. And we're going to put it there and you can see that there are no sources. So now I can switch between scenes very quickly, except that I don't have anything in this scene. So let's start adding sources. And we're go the first thing is we want to add a video capture device. Notice that we already defined some, so this time I'm just going to say add existing and we're going to add the 3500, uh, the D3500, and there you have the first thing. The second thing we're going to do is we're going to add a, uh, a video, a, an image, I'm sorry, so where's the image? Here's the image, and this image are we going to use the living room or logo? Living room ended up not being the living room, I believe. Uh, or the logo. No, we're going to call it F18. This is going to be a new one. It's asking where is it and I'm going to go to my assets. I'm going to go to original and somewhere here I created the background of an F18. 
And that's the background of the F18. I'm going to put it here. Uh, it's not taking the entire screen. You can see that the form factor is not exactly the form factor uh, that OBS has. So I'm just going to play with it until we're going to capture the entire window. And I am happy now with only one exception, and that is your arm needs to be in front of the F18. You will notice, by the way, that I am in a slightly different location here. Um, you know, there's one little thing that I don't like. I think I need to move myself. So as long as I click on this, uh, yeah, that's a good place for me to be in. Uh, this is how I like to be sitting. This, this is my natural environment. I would like to be in. This is my only thing on my bucket list. I want to fly an F-18. Don't know how it's going to happen, but that's my on my bucket list. If any of you can put me in an F-18, I will really appreciate it. Okay, so this is what we have. We have scene one, we have scene two, and here's the cool thing. You are presenting. Right now I'm presenting, all I have is my background. And of course I can use more professional background for the type of presentation that I'm going to have, maybe have the logo of whoever uh, I'm presenting to, but in one click, I can switch from having PowerPoint behind me and I'm on the left side to having this uh, with the F-18 in the background. Oh, by the way, I can add here another camera. Let's go to video capture device. Uh, we have the laptop camera. I don't want the laptop camera. Let's do the uh, create new one, C920. Right here, I do have a C920. We're going to say OK. Uh, C920 window opens. Right now, we're still here. Let's go with the C920. I'm going to do an OK. Oh, this is what the C920 looks like. So I am going to make it look bigger. I'm actually going to modify just a little bit and uh, you know I'm not happy with the size here so how about we make it bigger we can play with the C920 see that's that's the advantage of a DSLR it actually has lens uh, that you can set the uh, your zoom optically uh, instead of uh, digitally or uh, having an image like this so now we have another one uh, just like I did before, I'm going to put a filter and we're going to use chroma key filter and uh, just call it OK. This is the default. This is what it took as a default. Now, you can see here that I have all kinds of stuff because this camera is not really zoomed in. Uh, it has digital zoom, so it really doesn't matter if I zoom in digitally with the camera or I just in, in, increase the size. Um, but at this point, I will play a little more to maybe make, there you go, make the green screen operate a little better. Uh, let's see. You're just playing with things here until you feel comfortable enough. Uh, one more thing, though, you know, we're going to close it down. And I'm even going to move myself just so that you can see two of me here. Let's choose the scene 920. And I'm, now this one needs to be on the right side and the D3500 is going to be on the left. Uh, which one do you like better? Well, you obviously like the D3500 better because the quality is better, but here are some things that you can do on the C920. Uh, remember that the, C, uh, the D3500 could not be controlled too much because it's actually going through the adapter card. The C920, on the other hand, can. So if I click on configure video, I have all of the settings that I can use for the C920 uh, available to me. One of them, by the way, is sharpness. We can make the image a little sharper. We can change, you know what? Um, I think that right now, um, well, gamma does not seem to be, saturation, I can add a little more color and maybe say that the white balance needs to be a little cooler. And you can see, by the way, that things do have effect on uh, what we do uh, on, on the green screen uh, operation. Still not very good. So I'm going to do something else on filters. I'm going to add one more filter. And look at the filter that I have here. I have a filter called Sharpen. We're going to call it Sharpen. And look at what it does to the image. Man, I mean, this is too much. But if I stay just about here, still not a great image. 
I can play with the C920 with good lighting, with uh, positioning it in the right place and, and get it to uh, have much, much better. At this point, I'm just not happy with the Sharpman. So I'm just going to close it and say this is it. Uh, I'm not sure that I'm fully in focus. So double click, configure video. And again, one of the reasons is because the camera is further away from me. Um, if I got a little closer, you can see that the uh, 9, C920 gets into better focus. It's still not as good as image as the one that you can see on the D3500. So this is C920. Uh, this is D3500. Uh, but still, it's a reasonable one. It might even be just the location of the camera. So I can move the camera around. And now the camera is focused a little more on me. One more thing I wanted to show you is we're going to add yet another camera to this one. And the camera is the camera that I told you about before. It's in my iPhone, my new iPhone 11. And we're going to hit somewhere here. I have photography. And you can see the EpoCam app. Remember that I told you before in the previous one uh, that you need to use the red one. The red one is the high definition. I'm going to open it up. And at that point, you can see that this camera is a camera. It, the phone operates as a camera, a high definition camera, but we need to add this here. So let's add another video capture device. We're going to call this one very creatively iPhone. I'm even going to call it iPhone 11 so I can brag a little. And it's not the iPhone 11 Pro. What can I do? But if I go further, here is EpoCam camera, and I'm selecting this camera. And guess what happens? This is now my camera, which, by the way, also gives you a good visibility of other things that I'm doing. Uh, sometimes I put this on a tripod, and I can give my audience another look at uh, what I'm doing. Okay, uh, again, I'm going to shut it down this time, just close it. And uh, when I close it, I just like I mentioned before, I'm not really, uh, I'm not really uh, turning, it, eliminating it or deleting it. It's still here. It's available. If I want to add another scene, I can add another scene. And the most important part from all of this, uh, let me just move myself back to the center here, where it looks so much more natural. Doesn't it look natural that I would fly an F-18. You know, just tell the Navy or the Marines tell, tell them that I need to fly an F-18 because I look natural in it. But anyway, I have two scenes. Again, one scene has PowerPoint behind it, uh, behind me. Uh, you know, again, I may want to add the logo and maybe a better place for the logo is going to be, let's hold the logo until you see the red. Uh, maybe put it here. That would be better. Probably smaller so I can put it here. Now, this is, this is going to be my logo, but I may want to put it, bring it all the way to the top. So this is essentially how we set up uh, scenes, uh, how we set up uh, the different layers in the scenes, uh, the sources within the scenes. Okay, one more thing is right now, everything that I'm working on appears on this one big screen uh, and uh, I can do something else which will not work necessarily with Stream Deck, but we'll, we'll talk about Stream Deck very briefly later. And that is, I can go to studio mode. If I hit studio mode, this is typically what a broadcast studio looks like. This image here on the left is the next image. The image on the right is what's currently being, pro, uh, being uh, produced or, or broadcasted. So you can see this one is called program. This one is called preview. Here's what it means. I can start playing with things here. So for example, I, I can't play with anything here. This is production. This, this is being transmitted. But I can play with things here. I can move myself and say, you know what? This looks good. And I think it's time to eliminate the logo. What's on the right, this is what's being broadcasted. On the left, this is what's going to be broadcasted as soon as I hit the button the transition. When I click transition, you will see that what happened on the right, what's being broadcast, is what I played with. The advantage of that is that it allows me 
to plan the next scene, not necessarily just go from one scene to another. By the way, I can go to another scene and say, yes, this is the scene that I want. Actually, I want to move something a little around. Yeah, and I'm so much happier that, with it right now. I want to make myself a little bigger. So I can play with that while broadcasting on another one. Yes, it does require some uh, uh, attention to multiple things happening at the same time. But when I'm done, when I'm ready, I hit transition and that image now gets broadcasted. By the way, another thing is that you can notice that the what was the previous program went back into the, call it the drawing board or the preview, and I can play with it. The transition can take place in different ways. I can cut to it, I can fade to black, I can just fade into the next one. Let's do fade, and I can determine how long do I want it to take? So for example, well, right now it's already being set, but if I define the transition here, no, that's the actual transition. Um, I guess I can just, oh, I'm sorry. I can actually fade with, uh, they typically have this uh, little knob or, or it's kind of a throttle uh, over there. But I can fade, uh, I can define quick transitions. Uh, for example, I'll define fade, but instead of uh, doing it in uh, 30 milliseconds, uh, do it in, in a full second. So we'll define here as we have a new one, fade one second. Look at how long it takes. It takes one second to switch between them. So this is what you would do in uh, studio mode. Next, I want to talk about recording. And uh, recording is really very simple. You can see that there is a recording button here. All you have to do is just click start recording. You can see the red dot here that says that uh, we're recording right now. And then you stop recording. One thing you will see is now it's remuxing the recording. And this is uh, what I've set it up. Um, and uh, But I want you to see something else. And that is if I go to settings, I need to be able to determine what the resolution is. And so when I click on video, you can see that my resolution is 1920 by 1080p, which is uh, high definition or full HD. However, if I wanted to change it, you will see that it's grayed out. And if it's and also frames per second might be something that I want. I, I like this. This is what I set it up. Full high definition, 30 frames per second. That's perfectly fine. If I did 60 frames per second, it would take too much storage. Uh, the other thing is I want to determine in the output uh, part what is the bitrate. This is still available. I can still change this. Whether I want uh, audio bitrate, I like 192 kilobits per second. That's good quality audio. And I want to make sure that it's MP4. This is uh, grayed out. The reason they're grayed out is because remember that we have OBS. And on top of OBS, we have OBS virtual cam, which is what feeds into Zoom. As long as the output is active, it would not let me change any of those parameters. So I'm going up to tools. When you click on tools, guess what? Virtual cam is one of them. Let's click on virtual cam. I like it to auto start every time I start OBS, starting to broadcast mode. Uh, horizontal flip is an interesting thing and in that you can imagine what it does. It will, uh, okay, it's only gonna do that on the output, but it would flip the image. If you have any text, that's gonna be a problem, but sometimes you do wanna be uh, flipped. Uh, it makes it more natural. So when I move my head to the right, it doesn't look like it does on the image here which is my move, uh, my head moves to the left. This is what you see, which also means that you can read what's on my shirt. I'm sorry, yes, what's on my shirt, you can read it uh, appropriately. If I flip myself over, then you will see, or I, I would say my monitor would be, I see myself as, as I feel, but it's not what you typically see. But here's the important part that we want, and that is I can stop the camera. Right now, OBS is not broadcasting out. And in the next segment, I'll talk about uh, how do we get plugged it, plug it into Zoom or anything else for that matter. Right now, it's not broadcasting. So we're going to close that window. And if I went into settings now, you can see that I can play with the video resolution. So the default, I think, and this is the quality that you get out of Zoom is 
720p. I don't like calling it high definition, even though that's kind of the original high definition. This is full high definition. This is what I like. I can change frames per second. I can go all the way to 60. Don't like too much uh, storage. 30 is plenty, so I'll keep it at 30. At uh, 30 output, I can change uh, between MP4, MOV, MKV, which is kind of the default. Uh, I like to stay with MP4 and stay with it. Go back to tools, virtual cam, start, and now we're broadcasting again. Let's see where we're broadcasting it to. Now I've opened Zoom and it's time to show how everything gets connected. When you open Zoom, as you know, there is this little start video button and right next to it, you can select which camera you're going to use. Well, when you hit that button, what you'll see is you have access to several different cameras. One thing you'll see here is that I have, well, this is bad installation when I installed it the first time, uh, installed OBS the first time, actually in the second and the third, only in the fourth time I got it right. Um, but you can see OBS camera is one of the cameras and that's really the camera you need to select. Now you can select the HD, the DSLR, let's open it up uh, and you can see DSLR is selected automatically directly, but not all cameras can operate with directly going to Zoom or anywhere else, anywhere else and to OBS in parallel. Many cameras will only be able to connect to one piece of software. You can see that the HD, the HD60 adapter with the DSLR can connect to two different sources. So I can pick up the same camera from OBS like I do right now with the background that I've created, or I can pick it up directly from the uh, camera adapter and now the camera goes directly into zoom into zoom and one thing to notice is if you're using zoom then obviously you have the option for virtual background uh, one thing is if you do choose a virtual background the best virtual background you can use is if you actually indicate that you have a green screen you can click on this and then move to decide what is the best uh, version of green screen that's kind of in the middle, but you don't have a lot of uh, game with it. Choose none, and then in camera, just choose OBS, and let OBS do the work, let OBS replace uh, green screen, and do everything else because, again, it is a lot more flexible. So one more thing that I wanted to show you, and that's that I'm using a little tool called uh, Elgato Stream Deck. And what Stream Deck does is it allows communications directly between the buttons here. This is the middle size one that has uh, 15 buttons, three by five. There is a smaller one, and I think this is about $200, maybe $250. There is a smaller one uh, that has only six buttons, and then there's a bigger one that has 32 buttons, and, and I think that one costs 250. I may not remember the, the prices correctly. The good thing is this. If you have multiple screens, and you can put OBS on one screen, and then Zoom on another, and your PowerPoint maybe on another, and I have a four screen setup here, so I'm fine. Uh, you can use the mouse and click on different things in OBS. Of course, you're going to have to look at OBS to the side, and your audience may see that, but either way, you have to have OBS as the top screen, the top window in whatever screen you're going to control it. If you only have one screen, OBS is probably behind your Zoom screen, and it's going to be a little problematic to control. The good thing about the Stream Deck is that it actually gets access through all those layers to OBS, directly to OBS. So for example, this button, and by the way, the buttons have graphics on them, and I actually designed the graphics. Uh, I didn't just pick up the default graphic, uh, graphics that they have. So you can see in red, it's on, and uh, I, I did red on, black off. This is the DSLR camera. Click it off, click it back on. Uh, add the C920 camera somewhere. You can see it's behind me. Uh, add the, uh, well, I don't have the iPhone connected. I even did a button for the record button. Press this, it becomes red. Now I'm recording with OBS, even though OBS is not the top window on my screen. I can have different uh, layers that I have here. So for example, my formula, my trust formula, 
uh, my uh, F-18, which is my natural habitat. Uh, this is my F-18 and so on and so forth. Uh, it really makes things easier. It's not too expensive. It's another layer of programming. You need to know how to program this. I'm not touching this on this video. I will, if, if there is a need, I'll, I'll probably find time and, and record another video on how to connect Stream Deck into OBS. Uh, that was not the purpose of this video. This video, I think, is already about an hour long, and I don't want to belabor the point. This was only about OBS and how you connect OBS to Zoom. One thing, I showed you how to connect it to Zoom, but it's also the same way you connect it to any other um, streaming live or recording system where you, or video conferencing system where you can choose the camera and you just choose OBS. You have to have OBS, you have to have OBS virtual cam. That's pretty much it uh, for me today. Um, if you need something else, uh, I'll try and find the time. Obviously, I can shoot those videos every week. Uh, I have a little, uh, a few other things to do, but uh, I'll be happy to help. I hope this is, uh, this has been helpful. Uh, hopefully, after when I record, I can put some kind of a menu or at least let you know the outline of this video and where different parts are. Be good. Be safe. We'll get over it.